Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the special transmission on uh, Kashmir. This is PTV World's special transmission on the issue of Kashmir. Uh, Kashmir is an issue not just for Pakistan, for the people of Pakistan, for the people of uh, Indian occupied Kashmir or Kashmiris anywhere in the world. But Kashmir is an issue of uh, each one of us who is concerned about the human rights violations anywhere in the world. Uh, this is happening. These violations are taking place in Indian occupied Kashmir. It's been 40 days now, more than that, that Kashmiris in, in Indian occupied Kashmir are under siege. Uh, the ambulances have been attacked, hospitals have been attacked, people, innocent children have been attacked, pilots' guns have been used against the innocent children and women in Kashmir, and Pakistan stands with the people of Kashmir. Pakistan has been talking about the struggle that has been going on for the last 72 years in Indian occupied Kashmir. India has uh, deployed its troops in Indian occupied Kashmir to suppress the uh, freedom fight that is going on over there for something that the Kashmiris are fighting for. And freedom is not something that the Kashmiris are fighting for. This is also something that each one of us wants. This is what I want. This is what you want. Uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan did a jalsa, a rally today in uh, Muzaffarabad. It was huge, attended by a lot of people, celebrities from all over Pakistan. There were cricketers, celebrities, people from uh, uh, film, people from TV, uh, many singers were there to show solidarity to the people of Indian occupied Kashmir. Pakistan stands with the people of Kashmir and this is also what Prime Minister Imran Khan said at the rally. Prime Minister Imran Khan uh, defended the right of self-determination of the people of uh, Indian occupied Kashmir, something that they have been fighting for as, as I said earlier. For the last 72 years, Pakistan stands with them and Pakistan will keep uh, its support to this cause, to this Kashmir cause. To discuss this and Pakistan's support to the people of Kashmir, we have our special guest in the studios. Our first guest is uh, Dr. Varid Rasool. He's an expert on Kashmir affairs. So, welcome to the show. Our second guest is Mr. Lakar Shavani. He is spokesperson, Balochistan government. Welcome to the show, Mr. Shavani. Our third guest is Dr. Talat Shabir. He's an expert on uh, regional affairs and also on Pakistan's foreign policy. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Dr. Rasul, starting with today's rally, uh, this is Prime Minister's third visit to uh, Azad Kashmir. Uh, today's event, today's rally, and this, this uh, gesture from the Pakistani side to our brothers across the line of control, how do you see this gesture, this rally, and the words that were, the words that were spoken at the rally today by the Prime Minister himself and by other people? I think it was having three distinct characteristics. Uh, number one, it was on the soil of Kashmir. There was a diverse uh, participation in the uh, this uh, in the uh, in the procession, and the, it was carrying a huge and loud message. And uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan spoke superior as superior. Directly, uh, his uh, he directly talked to Narendra Modi that we are uh, seeing that until. There is a United Nations General Council session on 27th and then after I will decide what we have to do. And I think uh, it is a crucial hour when the gravity of pain in occupied Kashmir is escalating and uh, there is no, uh, India is not taking the notes of those problems which are purely on the basis of humanitarian and human rights. And I think human rights issue is an important one which should be taken the notice. But overall, when we are seeing the situation, these type of gestures matter when a huge population of 8 million is under the siege and there is no any, any voice coming from outside the occupied valley matters. And it matters a lot when there was a, a huge participation from uh, Kashmiri people who are the part of the problem and uh, who are also and the, from Pakistan. And you know, when there is uh, some sort of uh, this uh, imbalance in occupied Kashmir, always it is Pakistan who is Pakistan advocating was internationally the supported Kashmir problem. Uh, yeah. People of Kashmir. And Mr. Shavani, uh, this, the choice of today's rally, the place of today's rally was Muzaffarabad, Kashmir, Azad Kashmir. Prime Minister was there. Uh, the people of Azad Kashmir were there, as I said earlier. How do you see this gesture? And optics, of course, matter a lot in international politics. The world was watching today. 
huge crowd. How do you see that? Well, it, it was a great gesture. It was started uh, on Fridays uh, with Kashmir Har, which was marked and uh, across the country, uh, almost in each and every district and every tehsil, every town of the country, people gathered there. Uh, officials were there, chief minister mm -hmm. was there, ministers, bureaucrats, uh, almost people of all of the all of uh, all walks of the life. They uh, gathered on certain places and raised voice uh, with the solidarity, the solidarity uh, with the Kashmiri uh, brother, brethren. Then next Friday, I mean last Friday, the Chief Minister of Balochistan, Mr. Jam Kamal, uh, with his provincial um, cabinet members, along with senators from Balochistan, I was also part of that delegation. We went to Muzaffarabad, extended our solidarity with Kashmiri brothers and sisters there. Uh, and held joint press conference with President of Kashmir. Uh, and also a uh, number of officials from Kashmir and different part of the uh, country, they were de uh, uh, there. So it was a great gesture and uh, I myself observed uh, uh, the gloom on the faces, the light on the faces uh, of the people of Kashmir present there and President himself he was very happy with that gesture and which fol was followed by today uh, the, with the visit of Prime Minister of Pakistan along with his cabinet <coughs> member. They went there and held a huge gathering and people of all walks of the life were there. So first time, however, we are observing a new trend uh, in this uh, uh, entire uh, exercise that previously uh, almost religious parties, they would come. Uh, and uh, 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 held uh, uh, gatherings, meetings, processions. But this time, it has become a national cause. It has become a public cause. And people of right. all walks of the life, uh, they're feeling very much uh, the cause of Kashmir. And, and just for, the, for our viewers, what are the sentiments of the people of Balochistan at the moment? Because you are... Well, uh, quite, uh, how do you see the people talking about Indian occupied Kashmir, the brutalities of... Indian forces over there, what are the sentiments? Sir? On 14th August in Koita, it was the third day of Eid. And it's, it was not easy to, uh, you know, bring out the people to a gathering mm -hmm. when there is Eid days. But you believe me, and you have been observing and watching yes. uh, uh, the footages of 14th August, Kashmir Solidarity, uh, Solidarity Jalsa. Yes. Uh, the, the crowd was overwhelming and... Uh, the, the ground and uh, uh, we, we had uh, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, set the stage and uh, uh, the, the, over fa the facilities and chairs yeah. of 15,000, but people were more than 32,000 people. Right. They came and That's gathered and the sentiment, scary. the passion, the slogans uh, of the people, right. uh, the way they were participating, the way they were... Uh, sentimental, it was remarkable, unmatchable in history of Balochistan. So first time ever, uh, 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 even right. on the 14th of August, the, the daytime number of people were celebrating 14th August and same time uh, they were extending their solidarity with Kashmir and so also right. people of, uh, <coughs> from district, different districts. Everyone was trying to reach Quetta and extend their solidarity with the Kashmiri people. So it was remarkable. And, and Dr. Shubhi, uh, diplomatically, Pakistan recently, in, in the past couple of months, has been very active, the present government. Uh, pro our proactive diplomacy, we, we could see that. Uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan tweeted that, I commend the 58 countries that joined Pakistan in Human Rights Council on 10th of September, reinforcing demands of international community for India to stop use of force Le uh, lift, siege, remove other restrictions, respect and protest, protect Kashmiri's rights and resolve Kashmir dispute through uh, United Nations Security Council resolution. So this proactive diplomacy from the Pakistani side going to different places and a, a huge uh, gathering outside even the Indian High Commission in London. How do you see th this, this diplomacy going on? Uh, Taimur, actually, uh, this is very important that uh, we are on an important crossroad of uh, history where Kashmir dispute has come to light. And uh, the most important thing that the Dot Sub has also mentioned, uh, Kashmir is about human rights issues. 
it's it's uh, you know the territorial you know angle of uh, Kashmir dispute has now you know taken a back right. back seat at the moment. At the moment, human rights issue is actually uh, coming to the uh, to the light, and this is very important that by politico uh, diplomatic efforts that this government is making. In fact, this this and uh, the, the people say you know they they're disappointed, but I am very optimistic about it. This is very good drive by uh, present government, mm -hmm. and uh, and they are reaping the fruits. You know, Fifty eight countries endorsing that there are human rights violations going on in uh, Indian occupied Kashmir is success of Pakistan. Uh, you see, there are. Uh, if we speak about the human rights issues, we can highlight human, human rights issues and we can have the world on our side on, on these issues. Because there are, in my opinion, there are two prongs when you look at this issue at the moment. One prong is uh, diplomatic, political, and the other, other, other prong is not diplomatic and political, it is maybe use of force. So uh, this government, what uh, and it's uh, today in today's speech, uh, the prime minister has categorically said, "I'll go to the United Nations. <coughs> I'll speak about atrocities that India is committing uh, in Kashmir. I will tell the world that uh, what they are doing with Kashmiris, and then we will see the world response." This is very good. I think this is a very good drive, and this is very good steps that this government is taking. I think That's it's very hope. Hopefully, I think uh, in my opinion, the pace is though it. It's, it appears it's slow, mm. but I think it's right pace. Right, right, right pace. Dr. Rasul, how do you see this pace? Uh, because many people think that Pakistan's diplomacy is, is very active, and uh, rather Pakistan is on the aggressive uh, side, uh, aggressive diplomacy at, at the moment going on. Do you I see think, it that way? Uh, I think one must be realistic. Uh, since 70 decades, this uh, when uh, uh, Imran Khan uh, came back into power, uh, he took it, it, it as an um, prior, at priority. Mm -hmm. So if we consider it is <coughs> now Kashmir is on the priority, definitely I am uh, uh, from occupied Kashmir and habitant of that valley. We, we definitely need some sort of uh, what you see, some sort of console mm -hmm. and that is there. But when you uh, see the internationally the things, you have to me, uh, you have to go systematically and uh, you have to exhaust your diplomatic efforts and you have tried politically. But what, what India will do, uh, since uh, they have erased, eroded the article while amending from back door article 268, then amending 370, now they will bring in play the sovereignty issue. Now what we are, uh, what our government or our people who are in the foreign office, they are on the right track. They must knock each and every door which matters. Mm -hmm. Particularly, the general they have already raised the issue in the United Nations Security Council. And you know, uh, when anybody <coughs> knows that how international mechanism works, it is UNSC where something should come out. But UNGC, when you are going to UNGC, it is an it is an one step ahead when we are knocking the door of the UNSC. But since one time we have gone there. It's, and from 50 years, uh, once After again, 50 years, this yeah. was the first time uh, that again, was it is, discussed it is being it. debated. But what we have to, what we have, what is the appropriate and right platform? Right. That is United Security Council, and un it is the purgative of United Nations Security Council. We need a, some sort of resolution, and but that resolution should be under Chapter Seven. What what we have to do? You you say when Dr. Sab already. And can you told, briefly tell us about the Chapter Seven? Actually, uh, the present resolution, which is 5th January 1949, it is under Charter 6, mm. Chapter 6. Right. And Chapter 6 says that United Nations, it is a territorial dispute, right. and United Nations resolution is purgative is to help both countries to come in for the dialogue. Right. When you are discussing about Chapter 7, mm. then it is, they can, the United Nations can say, now we have to impose it. Right. Because when both countries didn't right. come in the terms, and we have to make <coughs> clear certain things. For example, there was no bilateral issue with our third party. For example, when they were in 1947, it was sponsored by UN. And then uh, 1962 water treaty, Indus water treaty, it was mediated by World Bank. And when you are talking about Tashkent, it was mediated by Russia. And you all will say that only the Shumla Agreement, right. which was not directly mediated, but <coughs> United Nations, USA, and UK were at the back door. 
So, it, we have to be clear about it, it is not the bilateral, they have been failed. Now, again one argument of India is again that since there was a violence right. and we cannot implement, but, right. but we have an argument, uh, was there any violence from 71 to 1999, there was no line violence and in 20 years you fail to dissolve it, it dissolve it by so, right. so we have uh, Mr. Fawad Chaudhary with us, uh, Federal Minister, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Chaudhary, uh, we are talking about Prime Minister's uh, rally in Muzaffarabad. Uh, certainly, the optics are very strong and, and the message from the Pakistani side is also very strong. How do you see today's rally and its, its impression on the international platform and otherwise the world is watching? I think the biggest message is that people on, the Pakistan, on, on this side of the Kashmir, uh, free Kashmir, are absolutely free and they welcome Pakistan's Prime Minister with open arms. Uh, they are free, they have their free will, they move around, they have uh, all the basic human rights available to them. Can uh, Prime Minister of India show same kind of, uh, uh, you know, public gathering in Indian occupied Kashmir? Can he even think of roaming around like the Pakistani Prime Minister can roam around in, in, uh, in Kashmir, uh, uh, in, in a free Kashmir? So uh, I think the message is very clear. The message is that the people, that the Kashmiris uh, in free Kashmir are actually enjoying their life. They have you know the full rights to live their life. And the people on Indian occupied Kashmir, it's 41st day that there's a curfew. They have not been able to go out of their houses. Their life is miserable. Their whole Kashmir has been turned into a prison. And Indian Prime Minister cannot dare to enter into Indian occupied Kashmir. Forget about Indian Prime Minister. The whole of Kashmiri leadership, even that those who are throwing the Delhi line, they are behind the bars. Not, uh, I, would, I, I have not seen even a counselor's statement uh, from Kashmir in favor of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So it shows that how, uh, you know, uh, how uh, secluded he is. He is uh, totally, uh, within, even within India, the kind of so BJP and RSS, the, kind of the way they have been, uh, you know, uh, working and now they are alone. If within India and even beyond India, India is alone and the whole world is watching them. The whole world is condemning uh, the kind of uh, atrocities they are committing in Kashmir. And I think that today's Jalsa yet again proved that Pakistan, the, what is the difference between the Kashmiri, the free Kashmir and Indian occupied Kashmir. Right, and at the moment, uh, Prime Minister also tweeted that 58 countries have joined Pakistan in condemning the Indian brutalities in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Certainly, this is a victory, diplomatic victory for Pakistan. But how do you think that Pakistan can step up its diplomatic support to the people of Kashmir and uh, internationally, especially in the West, we can uh, come up with more innovative ways of bringing <clears throat> up this issue of Kashmir? Well, I think I must uh, mention overseas Pakistanis, the way they uh, and the Kashmiris uh, living in the UK, living in the USA, living in Europe, the way they actually played their role, I must appreciate them. They actually became the front soldiers for the Pakistani diplomatic uh, uh, efforts and actually the confidence they have shown on the Prime Minister Imran Khan's leadership is just remarkable. Uh, they came out in thousands, uh, you know, in protest against uh, the atrocities in Kashmir in front of the embassies of India everywhere. That actually uh, brought the press attention to the Kashmir more than before. So the Pakistani community has played a greater role in that. And uh, I think uh, the way things are moving ahead, Narendra Modi is obviously notorious. It's not the first time that he has been involved in this kind of atrocities. No one can forget Gujarat. Uh, the way he slaughtered Muslims in Gujarat is evident to everyone. And uh, you, you may remember that at that time, USA and the European Union actually banned uh, Narendra Modi to enter into their countries. And his visa, and, and the visa ban was issued for Narendra Modi. So Narendra Modi is not a stranger in the West. He is well known uh, for his atrocities. And now this time he has chosen Kashmir. And now it's 9 million population. It's a question of 9 million population. Population is not a joke uh, that uh, such a huge population is actually literally being incarcerated in their homes. 
So I think uh, uh, the world is looking at the scenario very cautiously and also the whole world is trying to get the message through to Prime Minister Modi that he has to uh, you know, review his uh, steps that he has taken in Kashmir. Right, and, and uh, since you're talking about Narendra Modi, the Indian Prime Minister, uh, our Prime Minister, did a very uh, interesting analogy of uh, today's India with the Nazi Germany and Hitler and Modi. Do you think that, and you yourself have been very vocal about uh, the Narendra government, uh, uh, Modi's government in India and backed by RSS and Hindutva parties, uh, do you think that Pakistan can make the international community understand the, the similarities between Nazi Germany and present-day India, Narendra Modi and Hitler? I think Prime Minister Imran Khan has very successfully already achieved that uh, uh, goal by, to make the world understand that uh, what actually RSS philosophy is. And uh, by using the analogy of Nazi Germany, he has actually made matters simpler for them. Uh, the ideology of RSS and, Nazi German, uh, and Nazis are very close to each other. And what uh, Prime Minister Modi's politics is, is very close to, close to uh, Hitler, frankly. And even even if you see now, uh, it's the same in the case of Germany, where the whole world was trying to uh, get the message through to Hitler that what he's doing is not acceptable. Now the world is trying to get the message through to Modi that what he's doing in Kashmir is not acceptable. So I think that the way things are moving ahead, uh, Mood, Prime Minister Modi is actually playing with a fire. Now the problem is that uh, this, issue is not very simple. Uh, you know, there are two atomic powers who are seen eyeball to eyeball. So when such kind of, uh, you know, situation arises, uh, actually the, as, uh, the stakes are very high. So when such a huge population can really get affected uh, by the madness of, uh, of, uh, of one person, obviously the world is worried. And I think uh, the world needs to do much more uh, than looking at cautiously or warning. The world needs to come in and actually uh, make the matters, uh, take the matters in their own hands. Right. Mr. Chaudhary, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Mr. Fawad Chaudhary, uh, Federal Minister, was with us uh, on phone call talking about Kashmir and Prime Minister's uh, rally in Muzaffarabad and <coughs> Pakistan's uh, solidarity with the people of uh, Indian-occupied Kashmir. We'll continue our discussion on Kashmir and Pakistan's support to the uh, Kashmir cause after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. People of Pakistan stand with the people of Indian occupied Kashmir and Pakistan supports the Kashmir cause. Uh, the people of Kashmir have been fighting for their right to self-determination for the last 72 years. They have been fighting the Indian aggression, oppression, suppression in Indian occupied Kashmir 
Many young people have given up their li uh, lives in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Uh, people have been attacked, people have been killed, their houses have been burned, children have been attacked, women have been attacked, but they, Indian forces could never suppress the spirit of Kashmir, the spirit of the people of Kashmir. Mr. Shabani, talking about the spirit, uh, 72 years is not a short time. We see that in Afghanistan, uh, United States has just fought its longest war, that is, 18-year-long uh, war, going to enter in its 19th year. But people of uh, Indian-occupied Kashmir have been fighting this suppression and oppression for the last 72 years. Uh, this is something quite strong. This is not ordinary. How do you see this, this spirit? Well, uh, th that's a spirit. Uh, that's why the Kashmiri people, their identity, they have survived their identity and yet they are not assimilated uh, in India. Uh, they, their cause uh, is uh, internationalized, though hmm. international power they don't <coughs> recognize because they have got their own, own interest with India. So international politics um, always, it shifts. It has its own dimensions. In Cold War period, the, the, the picture of the world was something else. Uh, after 9-11, it's something else. Even after Berlin Wall, it was something else. So the things uh, uh, get changed, but uh, the they cause, the they mm -hmm. spirit, th that is the thing which uh, survives the nation, their identity. So the Kashmiri people, uh, I think uh, they have made it. Uh, and uh, the, the Indian, uh, uh, the India, uh, almost, uh, 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 almost one million their forces are deployed there for decades, so it means they are afraid of that national cause, mm -hmm. their identity, their struggle, their sacrifices, they are afraid of, and that's why they thrown cluster bomb on right. Kashmiris, yeah. which was followed by a uh, legislative bomb, mm -hmm. abrogating 370, abrogating 35 hay. So uh, I would call it a legislative aggression, which was made uh, by abrogating uh, uh, those clauses. But the I, interesting, I, interesting point is that the, the, the issue is that once this curfew is lifted, what would happen there? Because you cannot suppress the spirit and the reaction certainly would be very, very strong. What is a volcano? It would uh, erupt and you would see the eruption uh, and they are afraid of that eruption because previously, in historically, the Indian army, they have been engaged uh, with Kashmiris, with their uh, uh, stalwarts with their comrades, they're, they're uh, you know, freedom fighters. They know the scale, they know the passion, they know that how they dare and how they respond. So looking towards that experience, they're afraid and that's why they are imposed the curfew. And I think it would not stop also there. There is also uh, a, f a fear that uh, it, it is not confined to 370, but 371 A, B, C, D, E, GHI, the case of Nagaland, Goa, Sikkim, uh, uh, and other regions, they're also afraid because they're, uh, they're scared that uh, it happened with Kashmiris, it might happen with them also. Mm -hmm. There is also uh, 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 fear that uh, the Moody, and it is a, re a very you know, realistic analogy mm -hmm. uh, with this, uh, uh, you know, Hitler, the, the, on 5th August, when this abrogation happened, right. I, I was also <coughs> invited in a talk show. Uh, I think I was the f first who made this analogy mm -hmm. because if you look at the history, uh, the events w which turned out in ninety end of in mid nineteen twenties uh, and then thirty three when uh, Hitler came into power. So a lot of uh, intellectuals they were afraid that they were expecting same kind of you know, gestures, actions from Hitler, and that happened. And right. th at that time, people were saying that uh, this is not the issue only with two countries, but uh, it would encircle entire Europe, and that, that is and what happened. And then we saw what happened. So, right. so today, Pakistan is trying uh, uh, to uh, convince the international brethren that this is something uh, which can that happen, is and it is not the issue of two countries, but it might in future uh, be the issue of uh, subcontinent, then Asian, then region, and, in, uh, and the world, the perhaps. Globe. Globe. world perhaps. Uh, uh, Dr. Shabit, uh, 
this analogy certainly is very interesting. And uh, Hindutva is becoming a threat to the regional security. Uh, not just Pakistan, but other countries also realize this, this threat. Uh, Pakistan's letter that was written by Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi to the President of uh, Security Council was backed by China. Uh, China has also condemned the brutalities in Indian occupied Kashmir and they have asked that both countries, Pakistan and India, can talk about this issue of Kashmir. How are other regional countries looking at this issue of Kashmir 370, 35A and Indian aggression generally in the region? Right. Um, when we talk of uh, uh, Modi's designs or when we talk of Indian government's design, uh, this, uh, you, you yourself, uh, you are uh, student of international relations, we, we see that, you know, it's just game of power. And uh, uh, Modi government is actually trying to assert that they are a powerful regional, regional player in, in, in the area. And uh, it is a message to China, it is a message to other smaller countries in the region, SAR countries. So the message is very clear. This strategic messaging was very clear when he, when he did it. And not only he did, when we talk of Hindutva, Hindutva is not, you know, it's, they, they actually, BJP had plans 30 years back that they are going, they are going to have this country as Hindustan. Hmm. Towards, uh, on 5 August, in my opinion, India has ceased to exist. Now it is Hindustan. It's, you know, they, they just want to make Hindustan, everybody Hindu, you know, and, hmm. and Hindu will be able to live comfortably in that country, one. Now the regional countries, you see, uh, it is very important for us because in the, in the immediate neighbors of India are weak countries, smaller countries, and uh, probably the uh, last uh, 70 years, they were also actually following, towing the lines of um, India. The only threat was Pakistan. And of course, uh, when, when the regional competitor is China. So this, this, uh, this step, if it's, it goes unchecked, so India will definitely move move further and advance yeah. further, and which is not going to be good for the region. Right. And uh, of course, regional powers are also uh, aware that if India is not checked this time, it will you know be very dangerous. And appeasement, I just would like to since, since you mentioned about appeasement of when we you know analogy of Hitler, it's it's for the world to know and realize that you don't have to appease Modi because uh, and uh, on principle you should not. Because if you appease him this time, and it's going to be very dangerous because it's two nuclear countries that are confronting with each other on a very important issue on which Pakistan or any other country, uh, had any other country been at our place, wouldn't have to compromise. And probably we will never compromise on any issues. And I think the world has to cease appeasing uh, Modi and uh, look at the issue as a humanitarian issue, which is a grave concern of every Pakistani and a grave uh, humanitarian and it's global issue. It's right, not right. our problem. It's global issue. Right. And of course, uh, when two nuclear countries, they fight, it's going to be a, across this region and uh, region. beyond regions. And, and, and certainly not good for the regional security, stability or the world's uh, international uh, security yeah. for that matter. Uh, 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 Rakshab, talking about Indian occupied Kashmir, what is the situation there at the moment? The curfew, we see the curfew there. but any news coming out of what is happening over there and how are the people of Indian occupied Kashmir looking at this whole situation and resisting this time another aggression from the Indian side? Actually, when there is a lockdown and they have halted all sort of communication and there are certain landlines and I today talked with my friend, he is a doctor in uh, Northern Ireland. He told me that uh, you don't know that if I talk to my family in Srinagar, he just to know what is happening in his home. He doesn't know what is happening in the entire street or in the city, number one. Number two, when communication is halted, what is being uh, little bit coming out through Indian media and through international media? It is now just only source of information which is coming out and we are getting to know. And interestingly, Indian well, government is not even uh, letting yeah, uh, yeah, the Indian yeah, media come yeah, out what is happening. Yeah, and you have seen that they have, when BBC first, uh, uh, they, uh, they covered the Sura episode mm -hmm. just on 6th August and they told that this was not a actual coverage. Then BBC took the stand and then accepted that this is a real episode. People came out and there was a huge procession, particularly from the youth. And uh, thirdly, uh, there is a there is a really a humanitarian crisis. 
the crisis in the context if anybody is getting injured by the pallet injuries mm. and he is not going to hospital because there is no transport. If despite of that, if anybody carries him on the, on the head and, and he is not going to hospital because if, if the security forces have taken the notice, he will be arrested because he was in the procession. So, the gravity of situation, the gravity of the pain and the degree of the pain is very high. And number fourth, when just you imagine, but I am not able to contact my sisters, my brothers, what is the situation? It is, it is worse than the situation if anybody is jailed, but he is giving access, given access to his uh, nearest, dearest, kiths and kins, despite after 20 days or 15 days. Right. Now, 14 <coughs> days had been, had passed and nobody is given access to have a contact with their own people. Number four, the events, anybody has been died, the natural death also definitely and uh, where they are going, how he is being buried and what is the situation, nobody is taking the notes. And we are, when we are talking the humanitarian crisis, same argument was built by Pakistan in 1971 that uh, since there is a huge humanitarian crisis in the Dhaka, so we have to intervene, otherwise there will be a huge migration from east to west. So same argument is being applied here. Since there is a gravity of pain is very high and there is a possibility of killing and migration, we have to intervene. And we are waiting that intervention. <coughs> and number six, which is very important, I think, uh, the message from uh, DGISPR and Chief of Army Staff was clear. Now it is the uh, civil government who has to decide what we have to do. Because they right. told that up to last soldier, the last, uh, this uh, blood and last breath. Right. Right. And I don't think that what then the initiative, next initiative has to be taken by the uh, by the civilian government. Right. But people of Kashmir are really there. It is just, uh, my friends told, my colleagues told that it is just a pressure cooker. Right. They are building the pressure and it will explode. explode. It is in volcano. And this Hindutva mindset. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and we have to be ready for that situation. Right. And this situation arises at fourth time now. It was in 2010, 2013 and 2016 when Burhan Wani was yes, right. killed. Uh, so they, they have no contact even the people, the constituency which was pro-India. For example, Umar Abdullah and Mahbuba Mufti, they were the pro-Indian constituency. Yes. They are not given even access to meet their people. So it is why that I am telling that this is the time, now or never. We have to reach our people, we have to help them by hook or by crook. But my opinion is, that Imran Khan, our Prime Minister of Pakistan, should sit in the US, he should go personally to UK, he should go personally to European Union, he should spend more time in international community and convince them that it is not an just a matter of India and Pakistan. But interestingly, yeah. you said absolutely yeah. right that, you're absolutely right that Prime Minister should bring up this issue, yeah. we are doing that, but uh, this is my question to both of you, to Mr. Uh, we have to and bring it at highest Dr. level now. as well that yeah. Kashmir was discussed in the Oval Office, and this point was brought up by the uh, American president, President Trump himself. He said that uh, Modi asked <coughs> President Trump that he would like him to mediate in Kashmir, but India has rebuffed all that. They have uh, they don't give British to what President Trump has said. How do you see this whole situation? Well, in technical terms. Uh, when President Trump, uh, he said that I want to mediate and soon after that uh, it was followed by the abrogation of 370 and 35A. Technically Trump is the party now in the case of Kashmir because he was the one who tried to mediate uh, uh, and it was followed in reaction by Modi government. So now Trump has to take notice that what, why he was so rapid uh, in doing so. Was it a reaction after the uh, statement made by President Trump right. that it happened? So now he must ask as a partner, as a, as a party. So uh, while he's not taking that kind of interest. 
Uh, I think the case of Kashmir is an international issue. The international community has to take the notice. How allows British Parliament, European Union, OIC, and uh, entire countries because it is the uh, issue uh, which uh, which might cause confrontation between two atomic uh, 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 powers. States, right. So. Uh, it should not be limited to only uh, a, a issue, uh, a internet issue of India, but uh, an international right. issue. But uh, Dr. Shabi, in the last couple of years, India has become a very close ally of the United States. And at one point, President Trump wanted India to play a larger, larger role in Afghanistan. They have defense pact, they have nuclear pact, uh, and also uh, US wants India to become a bigger power in the region uh, and do you think that this aggression that we see in the Indian occupied Kashmir is also because of the <laughs> confidence that they receive from the American side but yeah. at the same time the interesting thing is that President Trump is talking about mediation so how do, uh, yeah. how do this, you see these, these two things going yeah, on? This is very important uh, you know the uh, you know world view is very important uh, America actually US is trying to build um, India as a counterweight to China, this is very clear. This is one argument. Uh, and in that garb, actually, they, they had this nuclear deal and, uh, you know, strategic cooperation and the role in Afghanistan and so, so many things that India bank, uh, U.S. banked on India. So, uh, but this very important fa fact, factor is that unless you resolve Kashmir issue, and get out of this mess because India is also in mess because of this. This and India will continue to be in the mess because of Kashmir issue because they have to resolve it. So uh, this this will continue. One thought uh, I uh, recently spoke to American scholar. He said, uh, "Why would we want uh, a country you know entangled permanently, perpetually with uh, Pakistan over Kashmir issue? We would like India to be free." and uh, ready and preparing and you know prospering and building you know as a counterweight to china or uh, to fulfill other purposes yes. so this is a very complex issue and uh, when we talk uh, you know why after soon after president trump's offer of mediation uh, this uh, abrogation was was done so people say it's a conspiracy theory maybe they are you know they have decided something at that level but the reality is that kashmiris are suffering they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, disregarded the world community. I call it as a go-to-hell approach by Modi government that they have disregarded all norms of humanity and they did, they, they did. And for the last 40 days, you know, they are uh, per perpetrating uh, atrocities on Kashmiris and they, they are, you know, killing people, they are raping women and doing what, you know, it's possible. Uh, because for them. they want this piece of land, they don't yeah. want the people, yes. the people of Kashmir. And uh, Pakistan, as a matter of fact, you know, is uh, also pushed to wall. Mm. And uh, when I say mm. diplomacy and the political efforts that Imran Khan is, uh, government is making, it's very important that you have to tell the world that we are, you know, look, we are trying to, we are a responsible country. Mm. And we have to project India as a responsible state, a resp responsible country. How can you be become a regional power when you are not, you know, responsibly behaving in the in the region? You have to see uh, what what kind of behavior your your state has to behave properly right. and uh, responsibly. So I don't think so. It's very complex. Um, so do you think that U.S. would take any stance, let's say, on on this issue of Kashmir with the Modi government, keeping in mind that the Modi government comes up with this? anti-Pakistan sentiment, they get their vote because of the anti-Pakistan yes. sentiment and <clears throat> Kashmir is at the very heart of Hindutva uh, yes. doctrine for that matter. Yes, uh, but I think uh, Hindutva uh, is likely to fail. Hindutva, Hindutva strategy is likely to fail because it's not only Muslims. You know, Hindutva is against Christians also. Hindutva is against Parsis also. Hindutva is against all the other... Anybody who is... is scheduled not cause. Any, anyone who is not Hindu. Right. Or with that Hindutva mindset. Right? Yeah. So uh, I think they, they have not realized, though those who, who are behind this uh, theory do not realize the ground, situ ground situation. You know, when, uh, you know, even if the con nuclear confrontation takes place between two nuclear countries, the, it, it is the world that was responsible to, you know, 
the world has responsibility to stop it. And that's why we went to Security Council. Yes, and it's very, uh, very right, very appropriate, may, may you, that we went to Security <coughs> Council, we are going to human rights organizations. We are telling world that when you do it to us, we, we, when you push, it, push us to wall, then we have options, and we will exercise those options. Like mm. uh, Dr. Sub said that, um, you know, there is a signal from army that we will fight the last bullet and last soldier. So we are very clear on this. So the world has to be responsible. The world, world has come to our help. And we must, uh, you know, uh, it's very important that the world should realize that Kashmiris are brothers and sisters. And we are morally bound to help them. Barbara. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Dr. Rasul, pleasure having you on the uh, transmission. Mr. Lakar Shabain, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. And Dr. Shabir, pleasure having you on the show. Thank you thank for you. joining us. Thank you for your time. People of Pakistan stand with the people of Kashmir. This struggle continues in Indian occupied Kashmir and our support would also continue uh, for our brothers and sisters in Indian occupied Kashmir. We have continued that for the last 72 years. We are willing to continue that forever, but we hope that there is a solution to this, these atrocities in Indian occupied Kashmir. Our uh, transmission will continue after this. Stay with us.